Good Cahirlock and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for coming in. Um, I want to start by stating that I firmly believe that the key issue, if not the cause, of a policy that worsened the impact of COVID-19 in our nursing homes was the decision, policy decision taken in the 1990s to contract out the care of our elderly to private for-profit nursing homes. And I believe that some of the points made by the expert panel and in other reports backs up that view. The fact that we have 80% of all beds in the private sector and that in that sector we see long hours of work, precarious employment, low pay, as well as a skills shortage and a push to cut costs. That's why we saw uh, the early use and restrictions around PP, etc. And this combined with a failure of medical care and clinical governments all worsened the impact of COVID on the nursing home sector. And I believe that this, as well as other issues that arose during the crisis, such as the lack of testing, etc., laid the basis for the disaster. And therefore, I have a few questions I want to ask them together, so maybe you would take note of them as four questions. The first one I want you to, to comment on is the call by relatives and loved ones of those who lost their lives, as well as advocacy groups of those who lost their lives in the nursing home sector for a full public inquiry into the deaths in nursing homes, because many of us feel that this report from the expert panel although it is welcome, is it not what is needed? The second question is to look for assurance that the staff in the nursing homes have access, all staff has, have access to a functioning sick pay scheme so that we don't have concerns that sick workers may feel compelled to continue to work if they're unwell. And can you also tell us uh, if you know that the use of agency staff is still as widespread as it was? and agencies in general uh, in the nursing home sector are being used widely. Um, can you tell us, my, my third question, and this is a, an important one and probably for Mr Walsh, who was it that changed the regulation referred to on page number 96, chapter 7 of the expert panel report that specifically meant that it was no longer a requirement for the person in charge to have a registered nurse qualification or a qualification as a gerontologist uh, on site in these homes. What do you think the purpose of that change and the consequences of that uh, regulation change were when it came to the pandemic and to elderly care? And finally, will you comment on the recent view expressed by Phil Nee Hay of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Association, our organisation, that we don't in fact need an audit of the staffing rations in the sector we already know that the staffing problems are bad and we know how to address them. P specifically, uh, how would it help to have a regulated and mandatory staffing ration and skill set, as well as a sector-wide pay and conditions applicable across all nursing homes and elderly care? So there's four questions there and I'm spouting them out together because otherwise we might run out of time. Thank you. I might, I might start and then I'll hand over to my colleague Niall and I'll hand over to the HSE then. Firstly, in relation to those individuals who have lost loved ones in homes, um, I think all of us understand how difficult and how hard these last number of months have been. Um, we are particularly committed to the recommendation within the um, expert panel report to build the advocacy services and ensure that those individuals, those families and those residents have access to professional advocacy, as we have been seen as being provided through SAGE and through the patient um, advocacy service. It is available across our acute hospitals and we're working to extend that out into the community as well. In relation to um, the staffing, we are committed and the Chief Nurse within the McClellan. Department has commenced the implementation of the safe staffing Sorry, framework. I'm not sure. so the safe staffing has been um, the safe staffing has the safe staffing framework phase one has been in acute hospitals, phase two in the emergency department, and phase three now is in older people settings. Significant learning across older people and the staffing um, evidence based in relation to staffing and the care needs um, of those older people is now being progressed through a draft um, guidance framework which is which the HSE and that is going to be looked to be tested over the next number of weeks with a view to having that guidance available for the winter period in relation to safe staffing. I might pass over to my colleague Niall in relation to the regulatory piece there that was raised. Sorry, before that happens, Ms McClellan, uh, th thanks for the response. There was a direct question asked by the member in relation to 
the Department's view on whether there should be a full public independent inquiry. And I know that you refer to other matters, but I think that was a very distinct, very direct question that maybe deserves a distinct response. If you could respond to that, please. In relation to um, the in, in relation to the question raised, um, what the what the what the department um, considers at the minute is that HICWA is the independent statutory authority. It is the on the ground in many of those nursing homes which have been significantly challenged and where relatives and residents. Um, oh, we're, have we're, I think we're all aware of the role of HICWA. I just need to press you on that point because I think it was a fair question that was asked. Either the department supports a full independent inquiry into what happened in nursing homes during the pandemic or not. So it's a very clear uh, question. You may not be in a position to answer it, uh, but if it, that's the case, maybe just say that we're all aware of the role of HICWA. So I think it's a direct question that uh, deserves a direct response. Thank you. Well, in relation to what I can say, is is ha has to be in relation to um, awaiting the various inspection reports from HICWA um, and progressing the patient advocacy service in relation to supporting those individuals and those residents. HICWA does have significant powers here in relation to um, the review of the care, in relation to its inspection reports and the examination of the care and its meeting of um, standards, um, and indeed, actually, HICWA has um, powers in relation to should it decide to do an investigation. It has powers under Section 9 of the Health Act. If the HSE want to respond to those other issues, I'll have to move on then, unfortunately, to our next. Uh, yes, Chair, as, uh, will, as quickly as I can. In relation to agency staff usage, uh, agencies certainly do have a role in supplying staff right across the system, but acute, uh, subacute HSE and the private sector. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the task really and the ask has been to ensure that we do not have agency staff moving from one location to another to another, uh, and, and that, that, that has been an essential plank in trying to reduce the risk of transmission. Uh, the, the, uh, in relation to uh, assurance in relation to sick pay scheme in nursing homes, I, can, I cannot give that uh, um, uh, except in relation to HSE operated or funded prim uh, uh, services. Uh, I, I can't do so in relation to the uh, uh, private sector. Uh, and I can confirm that I had no uh, uh, act or role in relation to altering the uh, uh, qualifications required to be a person in charge. Uh, uh, and uh, in relation to uh, Phil, um, Ms. Nee Hayes' comments in relation to safe staffing, uh, I know that the INMO cooperated very fully and were a key partner in the development of safe staffing uh, 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 levels for the acute services, uh, and uh, I would expect that they would be fully committed to developing uh, similar models for the non-acute services. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I'm going to so give Mr. Walsh, just, 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 just sorry, I'm going to give you one minute if you can just maybe to very, very quickly. Not a question, but just be able to. Respond yeah, to just to, to, just to say, Mr. Walsh, if you can't answer my question about the change in regulations of the requirements of the professionalism of the person in charge. Who made the change and when? What minister? What department? Who in the department? If you can't answer it now, will you please find out the answer and give it to me? It's, uh, the, it's referred to in the expert report, so I'm surprised you don't have the answer. It's on page number 96 in chapter 7. And it's a very clear move away from having qualified, highly qualified people being in charge of the nursing homes and deregulating them to an extent that I think that uh, it may show that patients uh, who got sick suffered and indeed residents as a whole suffered because of the re reduction in the level of qualification of the PIC, as it's called, the person in charge. Why was that regulation changed and by whom and when? Thank you, uh, Chuck. Sorry, to follow ask up. Mr Walsh if you can provide a written response to that issue with the other issues as well. Um,